Well, hello. So I've been thinking, what could I talk about, especially since it's the month of February? Usually that is the time for romance, love, valentines, and crushes, and all these different things that evoke the sense of being romantic and then the heart and love. We often forget that there's also other types of love. Love in the forms of friendship, family, even if it's just a partnership with other peers that are going through the thing, going through the same things or experiences as you are. I'll start with uh, what brought me to this uh, topic, which is romance in horror movies. We often think that, when, well, at least I do, when watching a horror movie, there's always that there's always going to be that love interest and from what i see it's very easy to kind of tell oh these two are going to end up uh, being romantically involved in some way Uh, there's kind of this common thing of the horror movie there is going to be that unnecessarily either like nudity scene or makeout scene something that's not necessary but it's intimate however then you kind of have to ask yourself is that even possible when you're in a situation where there's a lot of stress and it's a life or death are you going to be coming out of it saying oh you know what i am attracted to the person next to me well it turns out it is in a in a way there have been studies done to kind of show this possibility and everybody is aware of or at least most people are aware of the uh, love hormone oxytocin right Um, in a physiological uh, manner oxytocin is involved with those feelings of love and even in the most uh, climax of of that sexual intimacy intimacy but it's also the same hormone that in women it will help um, secrete the milk the breast milk when they're ready to give milk to the baby and it's also involved in um, kind of pushing the baby out once that baby has come to term during during labor however there are other hormones that are kind of involved with that feeling of pleasure and emotion that emotion um, connectedness and there was a study done where back in i want to say 1993 or 2000 or early 2000s there was a study um, titled love at first fright and what they essentially did was they uh, went to this theme park in one of the roller coaster, roller coaster rides. They got participants from the people waiting in line to get on the roller coaster. There's also participants that were getting off the roller coaster. And they ended up showing them uh, photographs of average looking people, uh, not, not supermodels, and also not people that are too well off um, physically wise and what they found out is that the people that have that were waiting in line and the people that were getting off the roller coaster if they were there with their significant other there wasn't that much of difference between those two groups they both would rate about the same. However, when talking about the the participants that were waiting in line and of the other group of the people that were coming off the the roller coaster that weren't with their significant other, what they found out is that there was a difference. The people that were coming off the roller coaster would more often rate the person in the picture as more attractive 
compared to the people that were waiting in line. And the, the explanation that was suggested was that the people that were already in a commit relationship don't really, when they go on the roller coaster, since they're already set with the person and uh, hormonal levels come to this kind of this norm like this uh, base level then that's why there wasn't that much of a difference however the people that weren't in a committed relationship and that were coming off the roller coaster they were still aroused aroused in the sense that they were still being uh, stimulated they still got that high if you will uh, they still got that high from from the roller coaster ride and that kind of triggered this sense that of attractiveness that oh that person in the picture is more attractive there are other types of sluggies and one of the um, substances or one of the other hormones that that was discovered was one that's called phenylethylamine and many people might or well some people who know about chemistry and a little bit more about um, biology might be recognize it as a substance found in chocolate which is why uh, many people say oh you know buy chocolates for your loved one or eat chocolate when you want to wake up and they usually stay out for the caffeine but there's others that will say oh if you want to kind of give if you want to impress someone uh, give them chocolate well there is kind of a basis on that so what phenyl uh phenylethylamine what they what it basically does is that in the brain when it crosses uh the blood brain barrier and it's in the brain it's gonna avoid certain uh neurotransmitters certain uh substances in the brain from being what's called uptake uh, which basically means that when the brain uh, kind of releases these substances then they get absorbed back again before they're released and so forth well the longer they remain without being absorbed the longer they act and so what they found was that phenylethylamine what it does is that it stops those substances from being reabsorbed so the, the other substances like dopamine and serotonin but mainly it's dopamine and epinephrine those two those are the ones that last longer and the effects also last longer now as i mentioned before there are other types of love but the reason why i wanted to mention this whole substance of phenylethylamine is that it is believed that this is the type of substance that will cause a person to stay aroused and the more aroused that person is the more likely they are to find someone else attractive there's of course people have their preferences uh, some will say like hair color or even height or ethnicity or or you know whatever that may be the case for the preferences but it does seem to be somewhat correlated between arousal and attraction now with the other types of love again it's not just love as in uh, romance you know your partner it could also be a friend we could also be talking about family we could also be talking a group of people and for this we do also see the same case in which in another study done in the early 2000s they found that if you grab two groups of people and you have them do activities together uh, one group will be doing activities that will be more uncomfortable so for example they would ask them you have to grab um, a certain object from a bucket of water so for one group the water would be fine room temperature for the other group, it would be very cold. Uh, for that same group that got the cold water, they would also ask them to do squats, but they had to be um, 
they have to put their back against the wall, making that exercise a little bit harder. And the other group didn't have to do that. They would just have to do squats and that's it. So once they went through the different exercises, what they found was that the ones who were in the group where they had to do the more painful or the more uncomfortable activities, they reported fe uh, feeling closer to the other members of that group compared to the group that had an easier, easier activities. Not only that, as a follow-up from the from, uh, from that study, from the activities, they had them do another form of activity. They asked them, they could rate any number from 1 to 7, but they told them, if you all agree on 7, you all get the prize. But if everybody chooses a different number, the person with the lowest number will get the prize. And something interesting happened. The group that went through all the uncomfortable activities and reported being co closer, they were also the ones who they engaged for the benefit of the whole group. And so they all got would would have got the prize. The other group, on the other hand, they were all over that range of 1 to 10. They all chose a different number. Not thinking of benefiting the rest of the members of the group. Just of, okay, what can they get themselves? And so, their conclusion was, if you have a group of people going through a stressful situation, you will feel more connected with the people who are going through the same experience as you are. And kind of to insert... It's not my personal uh, account, but speaking with having spoken with somebody who was in the military and is a veteran, one thing that they told me uh, he, is that when he went through the military, yes, you do a lot of exercise and, and you go through this kind of rigorous testing to make sure that you're physically and mentally capable. Of being in the military, um, talking about boot camp, it is very painful and it does cause a lot of stress on you. But you feel closer with the other, with, with your peers, with the other soldiers that are in your group, and not just that, but no matter what you go through, either in the battlefield or doing these, um, I forget how he called it, but they're kind of like training exercises uh, drills that just form makes you form a closer bond with the rest of the members and so that's where I I could see that having seen what I have seen from uh, from the first experience for example with the roller coaster or even with with um, horror movies because in horror movies, they're put in situations where they're confronted with a danger. They're going to die or they can die. So they're running away or they're trying to fight their way out of the situation. So, of course, you will feel that. You will go through that mutual experience. So it would be, it is possible for there to be a connection. I use as an example uh, what I have on screen, the movie Annabelle. Um, were the two characters of Mary, uh, who babysitter sitter for the Warren's daughter, who um, Warren, if you're not familiar with the country movies, they are the ones who uh, kind of go and they, they're from the country movies. Um, so when they exercise the objects or the people, the objects that were used as kind of like this antenna for the or the initial antenna for the spirits or the demons they keep those in a room that they they, they that they have a pastor come in and kind of uh, bathe in holy water once a month i think it is 
And when she is there and Annabelle the doll, you know, who has that has demons inside of it, is wreaking its own havoc. She's going through an experience along with her friend and also with this other person. Um, this guy who was just delivering pizza. I mean, in the storyline, she does have a crush on him and vice versa, but they weren't close. They weren't even on speaking terms. Maybe like a cordial hello, but nothing from there. And in the movie, once they go through the whole ordeal with Annabelle, the demonic doll, at the end, they do end up together. Of course, you go through a situation like this. And if it's true that in a arousal state will lead to you feeling more attracted to the people next to you who also went through the same. Well, of course, they were, were bound to be uh, together as a couple at, at in the end, which is what happened. And that's the same in many other horror movies as well. Um, and kind of like a side note, I do want to mention... This is not out of left field. There is, there are two theories. Uh, one that's called the James Lunch theory, which is just referring to because of the body's body's response, that kind of release of cortisol and uh, that stress that causes you to dilate your pupils or make your heart raise or you breathe heavier. All, all of those body responses are what lead you to the emotions. And it sounds reasonable, but then you have to think, well, your heart can beat faster if you're doing exercise or if you're kind of happy or if you're angry. It's not very specific. And so another group, of, another pair of, um, of researchers, they developed a two-factor theory meaning that yes you do have a body response but you also have to have the context to know what it is that you're feeling or why it is that you're feeling what you feel so in a way they'll say well your heart is beating faster but depending on the context you'll know if you're supposed to be scared if you're supposed to be happy how are you supposed to feel i mean both sound reasonable reasonable and i'm not here to debate one point or the other i just wanted to put that out there that if we look at um love the romance that happens in horror movies not just between two that become a couple or even talking about family members that are estranged from one another that don't have that close a bond but in the end of the movie they grow closer and typically they represent that as in terms of like a parent with their child or or siblings that go closer as well there is a basis that yes when you go through a danger you are aroused when you go through that mutual experience you do form a closer bond so it is possible it is possible what we see in these movies and I think that that's quite impressive because oftentimes, at least I used to, think that, oh, that's very highly unlikely. How is that even possible? But, hey, what do you know? If you want your first date to be memorable, now you know what you have to do. Do an activity that's going to ca cause some sort of arousal state. It doesn't have to be put in danger or that your lives are at risk, but... Maybe you're enjoying, as in the first experiment, a simple roller coaster or doing an activity that's going to get your heart pumping. That is probably a good start for a first date. And maybe they'll feel more attracted to you. But hey, what do I know? I'm not a love coach or love therapist or whatever you want to call that. It's just an idea. And that's just thought. Alright. If you have any comments or if you have anything you want to add to what I said, feel free to leave a comment. And, well, talk to you later.